Hey guys, in this week's tip, we're going to continue on with our series of taking a look at how to create batches within SMS. On tab this week, we're going to take a look at some of the batch types, focusing on future price, future sale, future TPR, future in-store, and maybe a couple other things. Plus, we're going to take a look at how we execute those batches both manually and automatically via the scheduler. Alright, so let's hop in. The first thing I did is I went ahead and I reused in a batch that we've set up last week and I set this up as a future price batch and I went ahead and brought in one item here that we're going to work on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the future price table right up here and I'm going to expand this out a little bit as well and we're going to go over each of the fields here so that there's no confusion about any of them. Now typically what's going to happen, or at least the steps that we're going to take that we learned last week, is to start this future price batch, we're going to go ahead and hit the plus sign, and it's going to bring the price in that's active at the register. Now we're just going to change this price slightly, just so that we can see that uh, what we made a change here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in and apply that change, and we know how this is all going to show up in the batch all changes window. But now let's go through each of these fields in the future price table in a little bit more detail. So first off, an easy one, batch number right here, number 47. It's the same batch number that we set up over in the header when we created that last week. The targets, this field here is a multi-store. If I had a multi-store set up here, I could double click and I could determine which store or groups of stores or something like that that I want this future price change to go to. That's what that's for. Level, this is the price level. If I double click, you'll see it has the price levels that are already set up in my system so I can determine which price level this particular change is for. Start date and start time, pretty self-explanatory. Same with end date and end time. Those are pretty easy as well. Price is what we put in. The quantity one here, just in case you don't remember or don't know, it's the same as what we have down here. What this says is that the price is $19 for one item. So if we had, like we've seen in some of the buy two, get one free type of thing, we could say in here, put a price, and we could put in a, a two or a three or something like that. This is the price for quantity three. But in our case, we'll just leave it at one. The TGM, it's what applies, just like in the price table right down here, just like down here, all this is is the targeted gross margin that applies to the regular price. All right, so we're going to go right to left on this because I think it's going to help make a little bit more sense. Remember, in the future price batch table, we're actually working with the price table and making changes to it. So the package price, package quantity, limited quantity price, limited quantity quantity, and these two targeted gross margins, those are actually entries in the regular price field. It's just right here. The package price, package price quantity, limited quantity price, limited quantity quantity, and then the targeted gross margins associated with each of those price levels. That's all this right-hand side stuff is. So it's price package price, limited quantity, just like what we have here in the regular column. Regular price, package price, limited quantity price. Pretty easy to follow so far. All right, so let's keep progressing to the left here. The discount dollar, discount percent. That's the exact same fields like we have in the regular price column right down here in the price table. Just as the same as you would use these two fields, you would use these two fields to set up activity at a future time. Mix and match and method, exact same as what we have right down here in the regular price quantity of the price table. If I were to double click in the mix quantity, I would bring up my mix and matches that I have already set up in the system. And if I were to double click in the method quantity, I would bring up that long list of stuff that allows us to adjust whatever it is that we're doing in this particular activity. So the next couple we got to look at are pretty easy too. This points bucket, it's the exact same points bucket we look at right here in the regular price column in the price table. It's if we want to assign points, particular points that is, to this particular item at this particular price level, regular price. That's what that field is for. Now these bottom three here, we're just going to take all those at once. SRP is used just like it is in the price table. It's used mostly for information purposes, label purposes, reporting purposes, that sort of thing. Kind of like the you know manufacturer's suggested retail price is X and my price is so much better Y. That's what this field is here to make changes to the SRP in the price table. The margin and the round fields, those are used to determine the margin for SRP that you want the system to calculate. And then rounding is just to round that price to like the nearest nine, nearest five, whatever your pricing schema is. Speaking of rounding, these last, the final three buckets we got to look at here in the future price table all have to do with rounding, and they have to do with either the price, regular price, the package price, or the limited quantity price. So again, if you put a five, let's say, or a nine, or whatever it may be in these fields, what it's going to do is it's going to round the regular price to the nearest five up. It's also going to round the package price to the nearest nine up, and it's also going to round the limited quantity price to the nearest nine, and it's always going to go up. So that's it. Everything you ever wanted to know about the future price batch table, probably a little bit more even, 
there in layman's terms. If we were to go ahead and apply these changes, you're going to see that in our future batch all changes table, we're changing the, the price to $19. We're starting it on the 12th, and we're also going to end it on the 18th, and then the rounding methods that are going to be set on those particular days, 5 for regular price, 9 for package price, and 9 for limited quantity price. That's pretty simple, not too hard at all. Okay, with our future price batch in our rear view mirror, let's go ahead and work on our future sale batch. So we have to create a new batch because remember in SMS, each batch is associated with a particular price type in this case that we're working with. So we're gonna go ahead and add to create a new batch and we're gonna say it's a future sale. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my name. We can see our batch number right here. We'll see that in just a second. We already know about the start and end dates. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that, hop over to the future sale table and expand that out a little bit. Now let's go through each of these. The first thing we're going to do in a future sale table is go ahead and hit the plus sign so we can start a record and begin to work on it. Now a lot of this is going to be the same that we've already looked at, but we'll just review it real quickly. Target is for multi-store so that we can select the store, the region, something like that. Level is price level, so if we were to double click we're going to get the same price levels that we have in every other aspect of the system. Start date and end date, we know what those are. And then the column out here to the far right, the price, package price, limited quantity price, those are the same price fields that are right down here in the price table. So we've got the price for the sale price, we've got the package price for the sale, we've also got the limited quantity price for the sale. So all of these columns here just follow this sale column right down here in the price table. Same with the TGM. The TGMs here are the same ones that are related to TGM right here in the price table. They're just related to the regular price, or actually the sale price, sorry, package price and the limited quantity price. So most of that is exactly what you expect. This next section right over here to the left, the discount dollar, discount percent, mix and match, and the method, those are the exact same fields that are right down here in the price table. The discount dollar percent, mix and match, and the method field. So they're the exact same. You could put in a dollar off, a discount percent off. You could double click to get your various methods that you want to use, and the same thing with the mix and match. So all of that is the exact same too. The further we move to the left, that's where we get some new fields, so let's go through each of those. The points field here in the future sale table corresponds to the exact same point field that's right here in the sale column of the price table. What we use that for, let's just go ahead and put 15 in here, what this is used for is this amount of points overrides the standard point allocation that's set up in the system. So let's say we do a dollar a point, something like that, or a point per dollar I guess. When the customer buys this item between these two dates, instead of getting the standard dollar per point, or point per dollar I should say, they're actually going to get 15 points every time they buy this item. So that's what this field is used for. These two fields right here, page and ad, can be used to help track marketing efforts. So if we double click in the ad field here, we've got some examples here that you can select from to let you know whether or not you run a TV ad, a newspaper ad, a radio spot, something like that, to promote this particular offer between these two dates. If you do that, then you can track the progress and see whether or not your marketing activities are working. The page field right here, that's used for the flyer. And when we go ahead and put something like a page two in here, what this is telling us is we put this particular item at the sale price that we'll set up here in a second on page two in our weekly flyer. It allows us to track whether page two is heavy readership and we're getting the, the traction that we want. This is also used in the flyer analysis, which we'll look at in a different video later on, but we need an entry here for the flyer analysis to work as well. The reference number field here is pretty self-explanatory. It's an alphanumeric field that you can put in a code that may make sense to you 60, 90, 120 days down the road to help you remember why you did this or to tie it to some other program or some other worksheet that you're using offline as well. The final two fields, kickback host and kickback vendor, those two fields are used for compensation for the sale price that we're about ready to set up here so that the margin impact on the individual store isn't as great. So if the headquarters is throwing down some money to help offset the margin impact for the sale price we're going to set up, that goes in the left column. And if it's a manufacturer of the product that's doing the same thing, passing along some additional monies to help offset the margin impact for the sale price, you would type that in here. So we're going to come up here to our price field right now, and we're going to go ahead and put in $17.99, and then we're going to go ahead and apply that change, and then we're going to see the changes update in the batch all changes window over here, just like what we would expect. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can see it's set up over here. The price change, the sale change, the sale price change, if I could talk, is going to be $17.99 between these two dates. We're also changing the points allocated for this particular item for items sold between these two dates, and we're telling the system that we're going to stick this on page two of our flyer. That's pretty easy and pretty simple. So we've got our future sale batch done. Let's go ahead and open up the future TPR. I'm going to expand this out a little bit, drag it over here so it's a little easier to see. 
Now, I'm not actually going to create a future TPR batch because you're going to notice the fields for the TPR batch are the exact same as the fields for the future sale batch. Instead of working with the sale column in the price table, we're simply working with the TPR column in the price table. So everybody knows the difference between those, so we're not going to review it. We're going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to come right back up the batch, and we're going to open in-store, and then we're going to create a new batch for that one. So just to reinforce what we've done, I'm going to come over to the batch header. I'm going to go ahead and hit plus, and I'm going to say we're going to a, a future in-store price change. That's what we're working on now. I'm going to paste in my descriptors and the dates. You'll see I'm in a different week now, so the dates are going to set up as, a, as appropriate. We're going to come back to the future in-store table, and I'm going to expand it out fully, drag it up here a little bit so we can see it, and then we'll review these fields real quick too. So I think you already know what the heck we're going to do here, but we'll go ahead and do it. We're going to add the record so that we can start on it. Target is for multi-store, so we can select a store region. We know that. Price level is the same price level we've been using for a long time. Start and end date, pretty self-explanatory. The price field here, I'll drag this over a little bit. This is in-store pricing, remember. So this price field is actually going to be the in-store price column in our price table. Pretty easy. Package price, limited quantity price. We've got the same fields right here in our in-store pricing column in the price table. TGM, we already know what that is. It all applies exactly to the in-store pricing column in the price table. Just like before, discount dollar, discount percent, mix and match, and the method fields, those are just those fields right here in the in-store pricing column of the price table. Points, just like we did in a future sale, if I want to set up a different level of points for this particular item for those dates, I can just put that in and it's going to correspond to this field right here. Now these last two radio buttons here, those are for TPR and sale price. What it is telling us is the priority of in-store price. Does in-store price trump TPR and trump sale? If yes, click them. If no, unclick them. That's really all there is to it. All right, so we're done creating our price batches for the future, so how do we execute these things? Well, we're going to come up to the batch menu, and because what we've been creating is an in-store batch, we're going to come down to execute in-store batch from the menu. When we select that, I'll drag it over here so we can see it a little better, you'll see we've got the two batches set up here in the in-store section that we've been working on, our sale batch and our in-store price batch. Now, they're kind of sitting here just waiting for the system to do something, and that waiting for the system to do something is to either manually manually interact with them or let the scheduler do it. So if you want to manually interact with these batches, we just take it from the in-store side and we take it over here to the right side so that we can execute. So we only execute the batches that are over here above the execute button. If we take this batch back, you'll see it comes back over here and there's nothing over here to execute. So that's one way to do it. Pick the batch that you want to manually execute, throw it over to the right side where we can actually execute that. Typically, though, I'll close this out so we can see this next step. Typically, though, these are going to be set up and run by the scheduler. So what I mean by that, let me open it up here. I'm going to open up a launch pad, and when we hit the scheduler button here, you're going to see a menu pop up with a bunch of activities that are going on with your store. Your store is going to have a lot different look than mine, so don't worry about that. But it's going to have, at some point here, an option for activating in-store batches. Now, if I expand that little menu a bit, what we'll see is, in my setup, I'm activating in-store batches at least once daily. So that's what this is doing. So all we're going to do, remember the dates that we set up on our batches. If I come back here to our batch menu here, let's look at our future price batch, and we execute this bad boy. During this time frame, the scheduler will automatically execute the batch on 1018, and then it will turn off automatically too at 1024. Then our future in-store, which I think was set up for a little bit later on in November, as long as you don't manually execute that and you set the in-store activity to launch in the scheduler, that will happen as well at the appropriate time. That's really all there is to it. You can manually execute them or do what most folks are going to do, probably just let the scheduler take care of that. Well, that's it for this week's look and review of how to set up price batches within an SMS. On tap next week, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the other different batch types, plus review a few other things as well. Until then, have a great day.